Hi, St. Paul. It's Audrey, and I'm here with two of our rock stars who uh, work with our outreach ministry at St. Paul. And we just wanted to touch base with all of you since we can't do announcements and visit on Sunday mornings. We just wanted to share with all of you a little bit about what's been going on with outreach uh, so far in May and uh, some of the things coming up. So I'm excited to have Kathy and Mary here with us. Uh, just have a couple of questions I'm going to ask them, and they're going to share with you uh, their thoughts and reflections on the month. So the first question is, what are some of the ways that you, Kathy and Mary, have seen God at work through outreach this past month at St. Paul? I'll let you go first, Mayor. Oh, okay. So I would say I've seen God at work just by what he does in terms of um, nudging people's hearts. And um, they came out with uh, generous contributions for uh, three of the agencies that we um, have outreach partnerships with. So I think that, um, and our, our congregation always really responds to needs. So that is a beautiful thing. And I know that, um, you know, God leads people to do that, so. Yeah, absolutely, and seeing seeing people's generosity is definitely a God moment. Kathy, what about you? Um, well, in addition to what Mary said, um, I saw it yesterday on the face of the people we took the stuff to, mm -hmm. and um, just even behind the masks, you could tell that they were uh, happy and very grateful for that we thought of them, and, and um, brought them things and, and um, so I saw God's face in their, their, faces. their faces. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I agree. I think um, being new to St. Paul, I definitely saw God in both pieces um, that you both mentioned. Just the joy in people's giving, especially at drop-off and being able to see one another and give together. And then being able to actually physically see the locations of these partners was really great for me yesterday. And I know we're going to Family Center tomorrow, but um, just to see the places and meet a couple of the people, um, just seeing God at work through the work that the hard work that they're doing during this time. So that was really great for me to see. What are the th some of the things that you remember that we collected in our outreach collection? I know we had a pretty big list of items that people could donate. Um, and so, Kathy, do you want to start and share some of the things that you saw were donated? Well, of course, masks. There were a lot of um, homemade masks, um, which um, are very much needed. And, that, and uh, knowing that they were made by the uh, people in our church, um, make them very personal. So I remember the masks and all the games that came in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we collected games for kids and for adults. And we had a lot of good response with that. Yeah. Mary, was there anything that stood out to you? Um, so a lot of uh, cleaning products and personal care items, which um, for many of our outreach partners, that is always a huge need because even if they're getting um, stipends and monies to help with their food purchases through bridge cards in Southeastern Michigan, they are not able to buy those types of uh, personal care items and cleaning products uh, with that um, money. So um, it's all, our partners are always in need of that. So that is really a big ticket item for the agencies to get are the personal care and cleaning products. Yeah, that was great. We had we had a few baskets full um, and definitely lots of paper towels and paper products. That was really good, too. And the great response with Kroger gift cards, my goodness, um, and what they can buy with that, the toiletries and cleaning supplies and other things that they might need right now. Um, I think we had over $600 worth of Kroger cards, which was really remarkable and very generous. So thank you, everyone, for your donations. And it was and great. Um, Audrey, the uh, fact that those Kroger cards are really helpful for agencies like Families First when um, they are, they might be spending time uh, to purchase food from fast food places and it runs through their funds really quickly and if they can buy food at the grocery store and make meals and extend how far that dollar goes, it's really helpful for uh, those families. Those families, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, 
The next question that I wanted to ask you both is uh, if you could tell a story of a time when you were actually volunteering and spending time with the people at our partner agencies. Obviously, we're not able to do that right now. And um, yesterday, we weren't even able to go into the Heartlines building. So just paint a picture for our congregation for people that might not have been uh, to some of these places and what was it what was it like to volunteer there and be with the people of, of our partners well i think when we um are able to go back to gleaners it is an excellent intergenerational thing to do they have it worked out so well that even the the young ones that come with their parents are given a job that, that to do that uh, they can accomplish and feel like they're um uh, contributing um, and then they have things for people like myself that can't lift heavy things and that and uh, but they you know gave me a job that I could check off what was on the pallet and and um, I could do that so um, the fellowship that comes from doing that um, mm -hmm. I think is um, really important and I look forward very much to being able to get us back as soon as they'll take volunteers again yeah, absolutely. And I love the opportunity for our young people to get out there and see that they can make a difference and volunteer with their family. I just think that's really great. So I'm looking forward to, to being at Gleaners too. What about you, Mary? What stands out to you as a story? Uh, so one of the more recent uh, service projects that we did last September with Heartline. And uh, Heartline is um, an agency that supports and provides wraparound services for women who are leaving the correctional system. And um, so what we did is we got a group of people to go out to Heartline after church, it's, and it's pretty close, it's right here on the east side of Detroit. And we uh, helped with gardening projects in the yard, and it was fall, and um, a lot of the women were really excited about uh, putting bulbs in the ground and planting mums, and we did some uh, fall uh, flower planters outside of the facility and uh, we served them a nice lunch they enjoyed uh, some barbecue from slows locally and um, then we um, had ice cream sundaes and uh, spent time uh, really uh, talking with them about the issues they were dealing with and uh, sharing ice cream sundaes and we prayed with many of them so that to me uh, was really a really meaningful outreach uh, situation where you could actually spend time with the residents and develop relationships and um, just be able to communicate you know Jesus is love to them uh, care and concern and uh, really feel like we are being the hands of Christ in the community so I love that yeah and I know that you and I have talked at length about the importance of the relationships that we do have um, whether that's with the staff at Gleaners uh, who are working hard and learning more about the, about their roles and who they are and what their stories are um, to you know obviously our St. Paul community volunteering alongside us and getting to know each other better um, but then yeah when we are have those opportunities to go and actually be with the people and hear the stories of the people um, at our partner agencies that's I mean that's those have been wonderful stories to hear from you and others and the ones that people speak up about the most are when they got to actually go and meet um, the people that our agencies are serving. And so I look forward to being able to do more of that. But until then, having conversations like this and getting to know your hearts better too and why you guys um, love to do this. And that's how Jesus was when he was with the people. He sat and, and, and knew them and had relationships with them. And I love that that's how we can be the hands and feet as well as we do outreach at St. Paul. So um, why, my last question for you all, uh, why do you see St. Paul continuing outreach during COVID and during stay at home and during all of this? Why do you see that as being important? Um, well, because people's needs don't, go on shutdown, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. they, uh, and, and certainly um, probably are more desperately needed items than um, because they're not uh, widely available. And um, so I think that, that that's huge. And also just um, communicating, even if it's providing supplies, communicating that we have care and concern for them and how yeah. their lives are. Yeah, absolutely. Because we have some partners that haven't, had very specific needs during this time, but just have been happy to hear 
from us and know that we're praying for them and that we care. Yeah. What about you, Kathy? Um, well, I think it was it's important for us to do, um, as Mary said, because we have partners that need things that um, we can provide um, and get easier maybe for them um, and that. And then it was, it's, I think doing this um, in such a manner that it's public, um, like we did the drop off, um, highlighted the fact that the larger church is still here. The church is not just the building, the church is the people. And that we were, we were out there, you know, collecting and, and, and being the church. And people stopped and asked what we were doing and that sort of mm -hmm. stuff. And um, it, it, I think that's important at this time because uh, just because some of the buildings are closed doesn't mean the church isn't there. Yeah. Yeah, we got to hear from uh, Bishop Eaton this week. I don't know if you, you both saw that, but uh, she said the church is never closed and we haven't closed. We've just, we've been praying and we've been loving our neighbor. And uh, yeah, I agree. I think it's important to keep doing that and that the community see that church is about so much more than just the building. And um, I know, Kathy, you and I have talked about how we can engage the greater community in our ongoing outreach efforts. And that it's important that as a community in Gross Point that we, we can give people an opportunity to give and to, to, to love others um, right now during this time. And also I know our agencies, the work they do, our partners, uh, it's hard work. And, and I can't imagine the burdens that they're carrying now that, you know, how that work has shifted and maybe even become harder and that they know that they're not alone in this work and that there are people walking alongside them. Uh, I think that's another reason why it's important to me that we continue in whatever ways we can. So, yeah. Any other thoughts that either of you want to share with St. Paul uh, as we move forward? I know we're we're getting ready for our our June outreach and I'm looking forward to being able to do that with our congregation and hopefully our community. Anything else you guys want to share? No? Good. Okay, I'd love to close us with a prayer. So the Lord be with you. And also with you. Awesome, God, I just want to thank you uh, for the opportunity for St. Paul to hear your voice and answer your call to be the hands and feet of Christ uh, in, our, in our community during this COVID time, during this challenging time and uncertain time. Lord, I thank you for Kathy and Mary and for our outreach team's leadership and for their hearts and, and for their love for their neighbor. Um, we certainly are a village working together to make sure that everyone um, that you love um, knows that you love them. And so we thank you for your guidance and your strength. Just help us to continue to have the wisdom and the connections that we need to, to help others during this time. And Lord, we pray for St. Paul for open hearts and open minds and continued uh, love for our neighbor during this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you both for your time today. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks. Thank you.